Welcome everyone to multiplayer tutorial. I decided to split multiplayer in separate parts so that I could explain to you about different things in different parts. And basically in this part particularly, I'll go over what is multiplayer, what Unreal Engine offers us, what server types, and also today I will go through all the basics of Unreal Engine frameworks such as game instance, game mode, game state, player controller, etc. And it will give us a good grasp and basic knowledge for what we are going to do in the next part. And speaking more precisely, in the next part, we're going to do some menus, some joining room and sessions. So first thing that I did, I created a separate level. I called it M main. That's where we'll connect our players and that's where you will be able to see your players. And a default VR template map, so VR template map, I will be using as a place where we'll be spawning our menus and connecting players to each other. So first of all, we need to go into some theory, right? So I created a test actor just for the purpose of showing you. And first thing I want to actually go into is basically what is server. So if you want to go through more of the information, you should definitely check on real engine documentation. And I swear it will help you a lot to understand the basics and concepts. I will leave the link in the description for this documentation. Make sure you read it. But for now, I will just try to explain it on the words. So basically a real engine has two server types that it can offer to us and they are most commonly used. So the first one is list and server. So to understand this, we need to know the relationship between client and server. So client is basically you or maybe your friend, maybe some other player. And server is a machine where all the calculations are made. What do I mean by calculations? By calculations, I mean replications of some movements, data, spawning things, and etc. Because if you're a client, you're connected to the server, and you spawn something in your world, it will be visible only for you, but not for the other players. Therefore, you have to send signal to the server, and server has to replicate all of those actions to all the clients, so that clients could see what you did on their end. Once you understand this concept, here we have our listed server, and we have clients. So let's actually create client. And I will make it blue. So basically client is again you, your friend, or someone in real world who wants to play a game with you. So in list and server relationship, one of the clients has to create a server on their machine. So imagine client one has a menu and in menu, he clicks on create server. It is a menu. So client goes ahead, clicks here, and now he becomes a list and server. So all other three players don't have a server, but they have an ability to connect to your server. So that's what they're doing. They're now connecting to your server one by one, and now you have a whole relationship. So when you create a listen server, it means that you will become a host, meaning that your machine becomes a server that has to make all the calculations and replications that I have described before. So it has to make copy of each thing other client has done to all the other clients to make all the clients synchronize and see the same actions as you see. So in this model, if client leaves the game, everything is good. But if you leave the game, the server will stop and kick other players too. So here is the problem with our listen server. If you're having two people, three people, maybe our headset will be able to handle all of those people. But what if we have hundreds, thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of people? Our listen server and our headset will not be able to make every change on the map to all the thousands of people that are connected to our listen server. That's why Unreal Engine also offers us an ability to connect to dedicated servers. So dedicated server, is a big powerful machine that actually can compute really hard and complex calculations. And by dedicated server, I usually mean some AWS servers, some Epic Game servers or Steam servers, like big, big, big centers with servers. And here, if you have four clients, you, your friends, any other players, they will connect to the server like this, but they will not be inside the server. They will not be hosting it. So in this case, it will be able to hold thousands of people or even hundreds of thousands of people on the server. And all of them will see the same picture and your game will be working. And the benefit of this is that you're using some other machine that is 100,000 times more powerful than yours. But the disadvantage of dedicated server is that it usually costs a lot of money and just you have to pay someone to run a server and to have it constantly on. We'll be looking into some service we can set up ourselves, but you will have to toggle them on and toggle them off. So for now, we'll be working with listen servers and then we'll transition to dedicated servers. I will show you how to do that. So after this, once you've noticed, we have three dots right here and we have a multiplayer option tab. And here we can see number of players and net mode. And we have three net modes, play standalone, listen server and client. 
So basically, number of players does what it does. It basically sets how many players you want to test with. And afterwards, we have three types of servers. So first of all, is standalone. If I choose a standalone mode and I run a game into new editor. So the benefit of standalone is that it first runs on different processes. It's not running in your Unreal Engine. It runs in different processes. And basically, because of that, it allows you to test the game in a condition that closely mimics how end game users will see it. So basically imagine you will have two headsets and you'll try to connect using standalone mode will be the most closest version of that. Afterwards, we have a listen server. So once you run it as a listen server, you will see that you have client one and server. It will represent already connected devices. So here is our client and here's our server. And this server is run on your machine. So that's what we have been talking about recently. And another mode is our client. So here you run as two clients. And the way client mode differs from standalone mode is that client mode is run in Unreal Engine. It's an Unreal Engine process and it is created for testing dedicated servers. So if you have AWS server, maybe Epic Games server or Steam server, you're using those kind of servers, client mode is the best way to test them. So because we want to mimic our application as some of the users were using actual headsets, we'll be using a standalone approach. So if you try to launch, you will see two windows. And if you close them, if you see some errors launching your standalone game, you will go to edit, editor preferences. And in here you will type credentials and make sure you will add two array elements to here and create any random two players like I created here. Password can also be random. It will make sure your error will disappear. So now what we can notice is that we have a game mode override right here. Maybe you have noticed before or no, but for each level, there is a separate game mode created. And about all of those classes you see here, I will talk a little bit later. Now I just want to create them and then I will explain what they do. So as I've said, each level has its own instance of game mode. So basically now we are in VR template level and we have VR game mode and it's built in game mode. So we have to create a new one in order to make some changes. But for the VR template, I'm not going to do anything because we are not considering it as a server, but our main level, that's the level I've created separately for gathering the player in one place. That's where you'll have your own room as a listen server. In here, we'll have to create a game mode. So I will go ahead, right click, blueprint class, and in here you can see a game mode base, but there are actually two types of game modes. So if you type game mode here, you'll see game mode base and then game mode. So initially game mode was created for multiplayer games, but afterwards Unreal Engine became popular for making single player games, therefore they create a game mode base. So if you're playing to work in multiplayer, make sure you will create a game mode right here, this one. So I create, now let's call it BP main game mode. So afterwards we are able to place it here. So BP main game mode. And afterwards, let's go ahead and, uh, and create a game state. So blueprint game state, and make sure you will also choose a game state instead of game state base. If you choose game state base and you have chosen game mode instead of game mode base, you will see errors and some unexpected behavior. So make sure if you choose game mode, you will choose game state. If you choose game mode base, you will choose game state base. So I'll create a game state, BP main game state. Afterwards, let's create a player controller. So with player controller, there is no such thing as player controller base. So we can just go ahead and create it from here. BP main player controller. Afterwards, we'll create player state. BP main player state. And finally, we'll create a game instance. I will explain what they do in a minute. So BP game instance. So in here, this level, as I said, represents a lobby. And maybe you have different pawns inside for assigned for lobby and assigned for your main menu. So in case you do, you will choose your another pawn right here. So maybe in menu where you're choosing your enter, create room, join room, you have a separate pawn with limited functionality, maybe limited to just pressing a button on the widget. And in your main game, like imagine it's your playground, you have a whole bunch of different functionality or maybe two different pawns. So here, just for the sake of tutorial, I'll select a VR pawn, then player controller class, BP main player controller, game state is our BP main game state, player state is BP main player state, and that's basically it. So now I will go back to my test actor and explain to you what are these. So first, and the most important thing we're going to discuss about is our game instance. So here's what happens. When you transition from one level to another, 
or joining a room, joining a session, you have different levels. And therefore, your game mode gets destroyed. And everything that is under your game mode also gets destroyed. But game instance compared to game mode is not destroyed. Game instance remains the same from the time you launch your app and until the time you quit from your app, like completely, like end the process. So for this purpose, that's the first thing we have learned. We have our game instance and it is mostly used for storing the variables you want to have access to for the whole period you're playing the game. And also game instance keeps track of connecting, disconnecting, and maybe destroying some sessions. And we'll just look into it a little bit further down the line. But all you need to know about game instance is again, it just keeps all the variables for the whole time you're playing the game. And it doesn't matter if you change the levels. So afterwards, we have our game mode. That's the one you see right here. So I'll create a game mode. And the interesting part about game mode is that it's getting created on each level. There is only one instance on game mode and the game mode is only located on the server. It is not accessible through the clients. So to illustrate you this point, I will go to my game mode and in here I will create a variable. Let's call it test variable. I will make it an integer and I put a default value to 10 like this. And in my VR pawn, since I've decided that my VR pawn will be my default pawn class, so it will be spawned instead of player start, I will go to my VR pawn and on event begin play, I will try to access this game mode variable. So I will get game mode, I will cast to BP, main game mode, but I will make it a pure cast. It will trigger an error, but I just want to show you what it means. And I will try to access this variable, get test variable, and I'll try to print it once our pawn spawns. And I will make it for... 10 seconds or maybe 20 seconds. So now when I go net mode and play as listen server, so we already have a server client based relationship and client is connected to the server. You will see that when I run the game, our server, that's this client right here that hosts the game, printed out 10, but our client somehow printed out zero. And when we end our game, we're getting the error. And the nature of this error, the origin is that we are spawning two pawns so one for client and one for host also a client who has a server and the client who is actually on the server has access to game mode because it's only created on the server but the client who is connected to the server will not have access to game mode at all so i will delete this code now we know what is game mode and just for you not to forget what is this i will put a description of what is game mode right here and also we'll make a note about where it exists so game mode is only in the scope of the server. So it's only accessible on the server. Afterwards, we have another access point. So if game mode is on server, there are three more objects that exist on server and the clients like this. And those three objects, I'll start from the first one, is our game state. So I will put the game state right here. You can read the description. Game state holds different information about the game. So game state, scores, time remaining, which team is winning. And what's important, game state is created on the server and it's replicated to all the clients. So that's why it has server and clients relationship. And it's using replication because all the players want to know what's about the level. So who is winning, how many kills each team has done and etc. Another item that we have created is our player state. And also player state as game state is also created in the server and replicated to all the clients. So in player state, we hold all the information about the player. For instance, as I've said here, it's score, name, and other stats. But be careful with some of the stats like health, because storing health in server and client might be more vulnerable to cheaters and they will be able to manipulate the variable easier than as you would have stored it in pawn or maybe the character itself. So again, you can read all of the description here. And if everything now seems confusing, you have notes here, or you can go ahead and read the documentation about Unreal Engine Framework. I will also leave the link in the description. And if it doesn't help, just practice it. Just play around those player state, game state, just create some variables, try to manage them and just see how everything works. And I promise you will understand it. And finally on server and clients, we have our pawn or character. So this one is the most common one since we've been using it for the whole time. It's our VR pawn. And because pawn, is on server and on clients, it means that once we launch the game and we have a host and a client, our pawn is actually spawned on both server and all of the clients. So if you have four players, the pawn is spawned for four players, including you. So basically that's an important concept to understand. 
And also the description, if you feel confused, you can pause and just read the descriptions I have right here. And finally, after our server and clients level, we have another level and it's server and owning clients. So now is the time to explain the difference between client and owning client. So I have also made a quick note and I will paste it right here. So that's the main difference between only client and client. And I provided a really good example on inventory. So uh, when you have inventory in your game, you want to be the only one who can see your inventory. But at the same time, server needs to know what is in your inventory. So server needs to register all the pickup events and all the events you used to put the items in your inventory and then give it to you. But you don't want other players to know this. Therefore, that's the difference between owning client and client because client is public for everyone. Owning client is available only for you. So in this category goes our player controller. It means what it says it does. Basically, it controls the player and it's some kind of interface between our player and the controller. So all the things we have in our VR pawn, right? So grab left, grab right, uh, toggle left, toggle right. They could be implemented in player controller and it's usually recommended to do all the controls and movements in your player controller. And afterwards, we have another category, it's just owning clients, it's widgets. But here is the difference between regular game dev and virtual reality game dev, is that when we have widgets in virtual reality, we cannot add them to viewport because we don't have basically a mouse to click on those buttons. We add them to viewport. We need to have controllers and controllers are in world space. They're not in viewport. Therefore here, widgets will not be on owning clients. So that's the main difference. Okay. So now I will just go quickly through everything again. You can see all the descriptions I have made so far. Maybe you want to make a screenshot. I will just make it all visible so you could read through it like that. Okay, so that was the introduction to basic frameworks of Unreal Engine. I hope you understood. If no, make sure you read the documentation or if you have some kind of specific questions, be sure to join my Discord server where I can just help you out and maybe give you some more information about specific things you have concerns about. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.